Hey guys, it's DC here and today I wanted to talk to you about how I got into cybersecurity contracting. So I'll give you a bit of background first on sort of how I started and then got into contracting itself. So let's go. I started uh, working first initially for myself years ago and I had a computer shop where I was doing like break fix repairs for uh, old grandmas and a little bit of business support on the side as much as I could but I was struggling to get those sort of clients. So I eventually sold that business and moved to a managed service provider where I was working on a full-time basis uh, starting at level three support. So um, no sort of project work included there, it was just sort of break fix for network environments, uh, networking stuff because I had my CCNA at the time and um, a little bit of sysadmin work here and there but a lot of like people calling up on the phone and asking me for support and then I was giving them that support. I then went to work as a network engineer, then a sysadmin, then a network engineer again um, and then network security sort of came off the back of that and that's where I sort of found this uh, niche at the time for cybersecurity and sort of decided to go go for it with um, particularly in uh, checkpoint devices. So I was looking for jobs that were all around checkpoint systems, so checkpoint firewalls, their next gen firewalls, because I had a certification and I'd done a coursework on those devices. Now what I was sort of looking for here was something that focused around those technologies as well as like Palo Alto stuff but I couldn't find anything full-time. I, I just wasn't able to land the jobs for a full-time role. So I went for one that was a contract position and it was as a network security engineer. The role was for a government agency and they basically asked me to do a checkpoint migration from their old checkpoint devices as well as some other mixed in stuff like some Juniper and some uh, Cisco stuff in there as well. And they wanted to migrate all of that to checkpoint. So I put my hand up for that and said, yep, I'm willing to take a contract role. Uh, this is my experience, this is what I've got, and they accepted me. So that was my first contract role, and I sort of got a taste for it there and um, really enjoyed contracting. But at the time, I still needed a, a bit more of a stable income because I had a whole lot of uh, debt and problems from previous bad decisions in life. So what I did there was I moved to a government agency as a cybersecurity engineer and I was there for a, a couple of years uh, working in cybersecurity and um, I really enjoyed it and it, it sort of enabled me to uh, get clearance and a lot of experience and exposure to different technologies um, as a cybersecurity engineer. While I was doing that job, I certified myself because I knew deep down that I was always going to go back to contracting because I really enjoyed that fast pace and sort of been thrown right into the deep end of these businesses where they, like when you employ a contractor, you expect them to know exactly what they're doing. And you don't want to employ someone and then have to train them and then go through all of that rubbish. So when people employ a contractor, they want someone who's going to come in They'll explain what the problem is and they'll just start getting it done. So yeah, I got certified in a whole bunch of different things. Certified ethical hacking, the OSCP. Um, I updated my Cisco certifications and um, yeah, I did a couple of other things in there as well, like the Security Plus. And um, yeah, I just sort of, I did those while I was working. Now, a term of me uh, getting those certifications through work because they paid for them was for me to stay there for a longer period of time, which I did because I didn't want to have to pay for them. Um, I did have to pay for one of the certifications though, um, which just came out of my severance pay. And uh, yeah, that was fine. I just didn't get as much money when I left, but I had another role to go into anyway. So yeah, then I went into doing contract work for different government agencies here and uh, both local and you know federal government and I was, I was sort of having a lot of fun. There's, I've, I've been doing it for a little while now and just hitting up different companies and going into those roles was always what I saw myself doing after. And the reason I wanted to get into them is because they pay a lot more than your full-time position, sometimes three times more 
uh, than what you would get in a full-time position. And if you can get back-to-back -back positions, which you can as a cybersecurity uh, contractor, you can definitely still get back-to-back -back jobs as a contractor. And you don't have to try too hard. There's usually like a one month gap in between contracts and that's fine. Just take that as your holiday and just roll with the punches for the rest of it. It's You're going to be getting paid really well, um, but saying that you do need to have a lot of experience and usually qualifications to back you up to be able to get those positions in the first place. So I guess the main certifications that stood out when I was going for these contracting roles were the CompTIA Security Plus, the OSCP, and my CCMP that I had from many years ago. Um, apart from those, they didn't really look at anything else like my degree or any of the other certifications I have. They just looked at the experience and then called up my references, which I always made sure were amazing. <laughs> those guys absolutely talked me up and basically made it sound like the sun shines out of my ass, which is exactly what I wanted from my references. and. Um, I, I guess I interview really well, so I did pretty well and, and got probably 90 or at least 85% of the roles I applied for. A lot of these contracts that I was uh, applying for required at least five to seven years of experience. So if this is something you're thinking of doing just getting into IT, maybe it's not the right time for you. Um, you might need a little bit more experience first before you get into contracting. However, there is other positions that you can do as a contractor, like sometimes network engineering comes as contract roles, but rarely they're going to employ someone without at least five years experience. And the same goes for sysadmin work. They, they sort of want someone who's worked with systems before, um, especially enterprise uh, Windows environments. They want someone who's got that sort of Azure experience to, um, to come into those roles. They don't want someone straight out of school to be a contractor because it's, it's probably not gonna work. The contracts that I've gone for have ranged from doing pen tests to like a whole network security audit to fulfilling different tasks. Like my last one was as a SOC team lead or security operation center team lead. Um, and that was for a specific set of projects that they wanted done. So. To actually get into that job, I was first employed to do a security audit where I outlined a whole bunch of issues. And um, then while I was doing that, their existing SOC team lead dude, uh, his wife got pregnant and he was taking some leave off and another guy got sick, he hurt his eye or something. So um, I came in there and uh, basically fulfilled the need for an extra hand. and. That's, that's what I was, I was doing for like a year and a half. And it started off as a three month uh, contract. So three months extended to one and a half years is pretty good, especially when you're on contract rates. The average pay that I was getting was anywhere between 650-ish to $1,000 a day. Um, and it, it varies on sort of what the project is, what the risk is involved, and um, how skilled you need to be to be able to do that job. So some of them were down at the lower end of 650 a day. Some of them were like, especially the shorter ones where they only need you for a few weeks, they're up at the thousand dollar mark. And um, that's pretty common. It's pretty normal. Um, I saw one for RACQ the other day as a uh, contract security engineer doing a firewall migration. So basically glorified network security engineer. And they were paying $850 a day, which is pretty good. And um, unfortunately that contract was a one year contract, so I wouldn't be able to fit it in with another contract I have lined up for later this year. But um, yeah, that in if I was still looking for contracts, that's probably one that I would look at doing. So yeah, that's basically my story on how I became a contractor and I guess the certifications that helped me, the level of experience that employers are looking for, or at least were telling me that they were looking for when asking me about it and um, yeah what sort of pay and positions I was going for. A lot of the interviews that I had to go for they would ask me to do a technical examination like on the spot right in front of them. So there's no chance of using your phone and looking something up they just sort of slam this piece of paper in front of you and say all right answer these questions off you go and they just sit there and watch you and you're there you've got like half an hour to 45 minutes to do this test and um, that's pretty full on and uh, I don't really like that style of interviewing. I don't think anyone does. 
but I guess it's a way of them testing how you work under pressure. And um, you're always allowed to ask questions with those sort of things, just don't expect uh, an exact answer. They're gonna give you something pretty vague, if anything, at all. Um, but, you know, just sort of go in there and roll the dice and see how you go. So yeah, that's my journey into contracting as a cybersecurity engineer. Um, I don't contract anymore. Um, I've got one lined up later this year, but that's it for me. I'm um, now working on my MSP, which is Data Sec. I'll put a link in the description if anyone's interested in reading about that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next video, guys. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more, comment if you have any questions, and I'll see you on the next one. Catch you later.